Hi everybody and welcome to Uncle Fuzzy's Story Corner. Today we're going to be reading The Boxman by Kobo Abe. Look, there's a picture. It's of a man holding a rifle and wearing a trench coat. Clean sweep of Ueno hobos. Check this morning, 180 arrests. During the pre-dawn hours of the 23rd, the Tokyo Ueno police began to arrest those vagrants trying to avoid the cold of the approaching winter by camping in and around the underground passages of Geisei Line, Ueno Railway Station, Ueno Park Daito Ward, in the hopes of preventing further shootings by the long, of the long-sought criminal number 109. A total of 180 persons were arrested in the underground passages and behind the Tokyo Institute of Culture, located within the park precincts. They were arrested on the spot under the law of minor offenses, infringement of the prohibition against loitering and vagrancy, and the traffic laws, acts prohibited on highways. All were taken to the Ueno police station, where they were photographed and fingerprinted. Four who complained of being sick were sent to the hospital via the Daito Welfare Office. Nine of them were sent to the home for the aged. Those remaining were released after signing an agreement not to relapse into vagrancy. An hour later, there was every indication that almost all had returned to their former haunts. My case. This is the record of a box man. I am beginning this account in a box. A cardboard box that reaches just to my hips when I put it on over my head. That is to say, at this juncture, the boxman is me. A boxman, in his box, is recording the chronicle of a boxman. Instructions for making a box. Materials. One empty box of corrugated cardboard. One vinyl sheet, trans semi-transparent, 20 inches square. Rubber tape, water resistant, about 8 yards. Wire, about 2 yards. Small pointed knife, tool. To have on hand, if necessary, three pieces of worn canvas and one pair of work boots in addition to regular work clothes for street wear. Any empty box a yard long by a yard wide and about four feet deep will do. However, in practice, one of the standard forms commonly called a quarto is desirable. Standard items are easy to find. Most commercial item articles that use standardized boxes are generally of a regular shape. Various types of foodstuffs precisely adaptable to the container, so that the construction is sturdier than others. The most important reason to use the standardized form is that it is hard to distinguish one box from another. As far as I know, most boxmen utilize this quarto box. For if any box has any striking features to it, its special anonymity will suffer. Even the cor common variety of corrugated cardboard has recently been strengthened, and since it is semi-waterproof, there is no need to select any special kind unless you are going through the rainy season. Ordinary cardboard has better ventilation and is lighter and easier to use. For those who wish to occupy one box over a period of time, regardless of the season, I recommend the frog box. It's especially good in wet weather. This box has a vinyl finish and, as the name suggests, is exceedingly strong in water. When new, it has sheen as if oiled, but apparently it produces static electricity easily, quickly absorbs dirt, and gets covered with dust. The edge is thicker than the ordinary one and looks wavy. You can tell it at once from the common box. To construct your box, there is no particular procedure to follow. First decide what is to be the bottom and the top of the box. Decide according to whatever design there may be, or make the top of the side with the least wear, or just decide arbitrarily, and cut out the bottom part. In cases where one has numerous personal effects to carry, the bottom part can be folded inward without cutting, and with wire and tape, two ends can be made into a baggage rack. Tape the exposed parts of the edges at the three points along the ceiling, and at the one point on the side where they come together. The greatest care must be taken when making the observation window. First, decide on its size and location, since there will be individual variations. The following figures will be fairly for, purely for the sake of reference. Ideally, the upper edge of the window will be 6 inches from the top of the box, and the lower edge 11 inches below that. The width will be 17 inches. 
After you have subtracted the thickness of the base to stabilize the box when in place, I put a magazine on my head, the upper edge of the window comes to the eyebrows. You may perhaps consider this to be too low, but one seldom gets the opportunity to look up while the lower edge is used frequently. When you are in an upright position, it will be difficult to walk if a stretch of at least five feet is not visible in front. There is no special grounds for computing the width. These parts should be adjusted to the required ventilation and lateral strength of the box. At any rate, you might you can see right down to the ground. The window should be as small as possible. Next comes the installation of the frosted vinyl curtain over the window. There's a little trick here, too. That is, the upper edge is taped to the outside of the opening, Let the rest is left to hang free. But please do not forget the lengthwise slit. It, this simple device is useful beyond all expectations. The slit should be in the center, and the two flaps should overlap a fraction of, a fraction of an inch. As long as the box is held vertical, they will serve as screens and no one will be able to see it in. When the box is sealed tightly, tilted to lightly, an opening appears, permitting you to see out. It is simple, but extremely subtle contrivance, so be very careful in selecting the vinyl. Something rather heavy yet flexible is desirable, and anything cheap that immediately stiffens with the temperature changes will be a problem. Anything flimsy is even worse. You need something flexible yet heavy enough not to worry about every little draft. The breadth of the opening can be easily regulated by tilting the box. For a man, for a box man, the slit in the vinyl is comparable, as it were, to the expression of the eyes. It is wrong to consider this aperture as being on the same level as a peephole. With very slight adjustments, it is easy to express yourself. Of course, this is not a look of kindness. The worst threatening glare is not so offensive as this slit. Without exaggeration, it is one of the few self-defenses an unprotected box man has. I should like to see the man capable of returning this look with composure. In case you're in crowds a lot, I suppose you might as well puncture holes in the right and left walls while you're about it. Using a thickish nail, bore as many, hole as many openings in a possible area about six inches in diameter leaving enough space between them so that the strength of the cardboard isn't affected. These apertures will serve both as supplementary peepholes and be convenient for distinguishing the direction of sounds. However unsightly, it will be more advantageous in case of rain to open the peepholes from the inside out to have flaps facing out. Last of all, cut the remaining wire into one, two, four, and six inch lengths. Bend back both ends, and prepare them as hooks for hanging things on the wall. You should restrict your personal effects to a minimum. As it is, it's quite exhausting to arrange the indispensable items. Radio, mug, thermos, flashlight, towel, and a small miscellaneous bag. As for the rubber boots, there's nothing particular to add, just so long as they don't have any holes. If the canvas is wrapped about the waist, it is an excellent thing for filling the space between oneself and the box for holding the box in place. With three layers divided in front, it is easy to move in all ways and as well as being the most convenient for de defecation and urinating and for other sundry purposes. An example, a case of, or the case of A. Just making the box is simple enough. At the outside, it takes less than an hour. However, it requires considerable courage to put the box on over your head and become to a box man. Anyway, as soon as anyone gets into this simple, unprepossessing paper cubicle and goes out onto the street, he turns into an apparition that is neither man nor box. A box man possesses some offensive poison about him. I suppose there's some degree of poison even a lazy a picture of the snake lady on a billboard or the bear man in a circus sideshow, but even that can be cancelled out by the admission fee. But the poison of the box man is not so simple. For example, in your case, I'm sure you've not yet heard of a box man. Though there can't be any statistics, there is evidence that rather a large number of them are living in concealment throughout the country. I've never heard of that a box man are being talked about anywhere. Evidently, the world intends to keep its mouth tightly shut about it. Have you ever actually seen one? Let's stop fooling each other now. Certainly, a box man is hardly conspicuous. 
He is like a piece of rubbish shoved between a guardrail and a public toilet, or beneath a footbridge. That, but that's different from being inconspicuous or invisible. Since he is not especially uncommon, there's every opportunity of seeing one. Surely even you have, at least once. But I also realize full well that you don't want to admit it. But you're not the only one. Even with no ulterior motive, apparently one instinctively inverts one's eyes. Yes, I suppose that if you were to wear dark glasses at night or put on a mask, you couldn't help being considered a very timid creature, or if not that, someone up to no good. All the more so with a boxman who conceals his whole body. One can hardly object if he is considered suspicious. Why, I wonder, would anyone deliberately become a boxman? Perhaps you think it's strange, but there are many amazing cases that explain why. Trifling motivations that at first glance are not motivations at all. A is a case in point. I'm afraid that's all the time we have for now. Take care and bye-bye!